Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of The Teaching of Isaac. So we have a, a unique character today. We're going to be playing Lilith. She's a little hard to begin with, but her spacebar item is pretty powerful. The box of friends, especially if you want to do the boss rush. So right here, if there's a shop immediately in the same exact room that you start in, nine times out of ten it's not a shop. It's the library. So I want that. Oh gosh, get out of there. Oh. The part of this game is being able to react to some of the randomness, and he was bouncing at a pretty irregular pattern that I wasn't expecting. And you notice with Lilith, it's a little bit harder to control the tears, so it's much harder to utilize cover. So normally I could just curve my shots and run back to cover, but as you can see, when I do this, it's not making much of a difference. So you gotta make your actions pretty wide. Oh right, I got a key now, so I should go check out the library at the beginning. So these stonies, they're, they're always hard to deal with. Fortunately, it's just a room full of poops, so it's not too threatening. But I remember when this game didn't even have stonies. It was a lot easier. In fact, this makes it really hard with Lilith. These guys are already hard to deal with to begin with. But as I'm running, they keep up with my Incubus. Okay, this is really cool. This is 2020. It essentially may as well be double damage. There are other items like the Mutant Spider that gives you four tiers at a time, or the Inner Eye that gives you three shots at a time, but those slow down your tier speed, or how fast you're shooting your tiers, rather. 2020 just gives you a solid two tiers at a time, so it's very powerful. And what do you know? A library. So I'm taking them both, or at least I'm going to pick them up, because now I just need one more book, and I can get the bookworm transformation. It's tough. I really like the Book of Shadows because of its invincibility, but Lilith is also a little bit dependent on the box of friends, just based upon how she works. Because of her uh, Cambian Conception ability. Which means every time you get hurt... Well, not every time you get hurt. It's more of a, if you get hit X number of times, then you spawn a familiar. And I think the cap is either four or five familiars. I don't remember which one. But either way, each time you spawn a new familiar, it's going to take several more stabs to be able to spawn a nether. So it requires more and more stabs per familiar you spawn. When I say stabs, I'm referring to being hit. Whether it's by hitting yourself with the IV bag or getting damaged by an enemy. You may have noticed I popped the box of friends here for two reasons. One, it's kind of hard of a room since it's bigger. But two, in a bigger room you get a double charge out of the deal as opposed to just one charge. So get a little more bang for your buck when the rooms are there. Now, normally what I would do is I would push this to where I think the secret room is. I don't think the secret room is attached to this. I think it's probably right here. So if I get one bomb, put it right here, it'll blow up the secret room. What I think is the secret room at least. It'll blow up this jar and it'll give me an extra bomb. So that's the most ideal location for a bomb. I'm gonna wait till I clear the rest of the level first. It 
in the, I believe it was the first episode, you may have remembered I blew up one of these green champion bosses into a wall to blow up the secret room. It's kind of hard baiting a very slow fly to this. In fact, I don't even know if it's possible in my case, so I didn't bother giving that a try. But let's see if what I referred to earlier actually comes to pass. No. To my surprise, it did not. But no harm, no foul. I got an extra bomb out of the deal. And it's a trade-off here also, but I could get coins. But no, I did not. So now that I did not get the secret room there, I'm going to try to get a secret room with this barrel. The weird colored ones are the ones you can push. Now how far do I push it's a question. I'm going to wait for the camera to stop moving. Right here. So I pushed it a little bit too far. I could also go for the super secret room, but I don't think it's here. Now. Oh, good old stonies. You know how much I like those. When these stonies first came out, they didn't actually have to stop and take a breath. They would just keep moving. So they were actually harder before. So I really, I'm kind of baffled as to where the secret rooms are. Maybe the super secret rooms right here. If it's not here, I'm going to stop wasting my bombs. Yeah, this one's a little bit too complex due to the large rooms and the fact that where I thought the super secret room was was actually nothing. But don't sweat it. The first level is usually tricky to figure out where the rooms are. The super secret room and the regular secret room. So this guy right here, if you get swarmed, you can kind of bait him to these sacks, and he'll kill them for you. In fact, don't even bother with the spiders, just focus on him. He'll end up crushing most of your opponents. And during that, I forgot I could have used Box of Friends. That was pretty uh, silly of me to forget that. HP up. So I got more bombs, but like I said, not worth it. Moving on. Alright, we got our first tinted rock. Yeah, so the cellar is a lot harder than the basement. The only way you get the cellar is... You have to fight Gemini. And instead of killing the the big guy first, you have to kill the little guy first. Which is pretty challenging. I never ended up getting that by accident. I had to look up how to get the cellar in order to get it. Let's face it, it's so much easier killing the big guy first. So if your intentions are unlocking everything with as minimal effort as possible, probably best to leave the cellar alone until later. But that's just, uh, in, in my opinion, I wouldn't do that just because that takes away some of the fun and some of the challenge. So it's best if I actually wait around for these worms to blow up everything. They're taking out all these urns here. They could get me quite a bit of money. Problem is, when the room is this big, you could be waiting a long time. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to wait.
So I tried to bait him to attack me where the urn was, but I blocked his line of sight, therefore he didn't even try shooting. But you see, if he gets close, he does aim towards you at least. But he's sticking away from me. There we go. Well, alright, I'm done. There's more, but I don't want to sit here for 20 minutes for something that trivial. No way would I touch the sacrifice room right now. I would need a lot more health. But Lilith does capitalize on sacrifice rooms a little bit better than other characters due to the, due to the Cambian conception ability. Since every time she hurts herself, she gets one step closer to spawning another familiar. So I can pretty much guarantee this is the super secret room just due to the layout. We know it can't be on the right side or any, there's no secret room on the right side whatsoever because it's blocked off. So there's a nice little spot here. If I had no soul hearts, I would utilize this and hurt myself on purpose with these red poops or the sacrifice room. That way I could hurt myself Grab another heart, and every time I hurt myself, it goes towards the Cambian Conception ability. It'll spawn me more familiars. Now, I'm not ready for the boss because I want to get the treasure room item. I want to be as strong as possible. Or, I guess another way to put that is, I want to be the very best like no one ever was. If I had more bombs, I could put a bomb right here, push it up against the, the key here, and it would blow it up and ricochet off the wall and come to my area. But I have three keys and one bomb, that's not a great ratio, ouch. So those spiders, you have to unfortunately anticipate that charge move they do. They just fly right to you instantly, and sometimes there's nothing you could do about it, but it's best to anticipate it, and you kind of get a rhythm for those spiders. Every few seconds they move almost simultaneously, so you want to try to move exactly when they do and get them out of the way. You have to expect they'll do that really fast move every single time. It's kind of hard though. Okay, the D-Infinity. So it's always two charges regardless of what type of die it gives you. You could really mess with the game with this item. The downside is I'd be giving up my box of friends if I did this, but it's a fun item and it can really mess with your run in a good way. So I might just keep it for the heck of it. Right now it's the D10, I believe. And I could re-roll items on the floor. I want to re-roll these, but the problem is there's all these spikes, so I couldn't reach the items anyway. I also have several batteries on the field, so I might just uh, go for it. Although I got an idea. I don't expect to be able to utilize the hearts in the secret room. So I'm going to utilize them this way. Not what I was hoping for exactly, but bombs are good. And then I'm going to take this. This one re-rolls every object or destructible rather, like this. You don't see that every day, just re-roll it to a golden poop, that's pretty cool. And the counterfeit penny. Every coin you pick up has a chance of giving you an extra one. Actually, so here's the situation. I could re-roll my items, but I'll lose my double shot. Rerolling everything is a little more useful when you have more items. 
Otherwise, it's unlikely I'm going to get something better whenever you roll this. So, it's actually a disadvantage at this point if I start rerolling my items when I have hardly anything. If I were to do it, it would kind of just be for the heck of it, for fun, or maybe to demonstrate a, a larger variety of synergies and items as I continue to re-roll myself. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this so early on when you already have a good item to begin with. But I'm doing it anyway, against my better judgment. Okay, that's actually a really good item. Pin. So he's going to die really fast because of what I just picked up. I think it's pronounced polythemus. But either way, it turns your tears into a huge tear that pierces for the most part. And it's very strong. I have 15 damage versus, I think I had 3.5 earlier. Alright, HP up. I have a lot of health now. And here are my devil deals. Do I want this? Yes, I do. I have even more damage now. And it's kind of a tough situation because my items are so good, I don't really want to re-roll them. I, mean, I didn't think I would get Polyphemus. And hopefully I'm not pronouncing that wrong. Some of these names in the Binding of Isaac are a little bit tricky, especially when they're associated with diseases. But I'm sticking with that for now. So here, I'll show you that trick I mentioned. Drop the bomb. You could probably drop it really close and it's still probably... The shockwave would still probably push it. But I didn't want to risk it. So I just pushed the bomb into it. Don't push it too hard, otherwise you'll hit the spike. You can even do that with the golden chest, but they don't move as well. Sometimes that could take a few bombs. Especially if you don't know what you're doing. So if I kept the D infinity, I'd still probably be okay. But this is such a good start that I don't really at this point, I don't want to go ahead and risk it anymore. I was hoping there would be a arcade here. Although actually I couldn't get an arcade, it's impossible because I have to start with at least five coins when I reach level two. So that was not meant to be. But Lilith really capitalizes on those arcades due to the blood donation machine where she could hurt herself and get extra familiars. Now with a weak setup in terms of items, I would have been really in trouble in that situation. The champions approaching me splits into multiple enemies when he dies, he likes to spit out lots of tears in all directions. So I would have popped the box of friends at that point. If I didn't have such a good setup of items right now. By the way, I forgot to mention that I got, I got um, Mom's eyeshadow here. That just allows the enemies to be charmed every so often when you hit them. Wasn't very exciting versus Polyphemus, so that's why I didn't really mention that. And then dog food, or rather the uh, lunch, just gives you an HP up. Okay, this game is making it really difficult for me to figure out what spacebar item to take. This one is really good, the cutting shears. Wait, the cutting shears or the pinking shears? The pinking shears, right. When you use it, your head flies off and it allows you to have flight. But the other benefit... Let me show you something first before I talk more. So I can get this green guy... Oh, so much for that. To blow up the mushrooms. 
It's a little bit easier with a different character because it's hard to bait my Incubus out of the way and then shoot that charger there. But anyway, you can kite them and blow up all the mushrooms potentially. Now what I was saying is the pinking shears allow you to have flight, but also it makes your body turn into a rampaging machine and just destroys everything in sight. It's one of the best boss killers in the game. It trivializes bosses for the most part. And Box of Friends is great, but it's becoming harder and harder for me to want to keep it. So this looks like there's a secret room to the north. That's not the case. And the reason behind that is because the room that's attached to it is a small room like this, or a skinny room rather. When you see a skinny room like this, the secret room is never on either side. Same thing if it's horizontal. If it's horizontal, it's not going to be on the up and down section. In this case, it's vertical. It's not going to be on the left and right section. It's an impossibility. So I know for a fact there is no secret room here. There is a tinted rock, however. You may have noticed I was going after that spider that just hit me, but then I changed targets and went after the exploding one. Definitely want to prioritize the exploding one because he'll get in your face and then there's nothing you could do at that point. Okay, so in another video, I tried to capitalize on kiting these guys, but it just didn't work out. So I'm going to show you now. Now, there's not always these traps that are shooting at you. So if you've never done this before, I recommend not doing it during a room where these stone guys are shooting at you. But as you see, instead of me actually attacking them, I'm just kiting them in circles. You want to get kind of close to them so they have a chance to attack. And when they attack, they will blow up these mushrooms. And you can get some pills out of it. Or I got that trinket that dropped. Or if you're super lucky, you can get a mushroom item like the super mushroom. The risk of this, though, is for the enemies, is the, the mushrooms blow up sometimes and ends up killing them all. Now the question is, do I want the counterfeit penny or do I want the liberty cap? The liberty cap gives you a random mushroom effect per room. Sometimes it does nothing, I think. See, I'm still trying to curve my shots because this is a dangerous situation, but it's like I said before, it's hard to curve your shots with Lilith. So I think I will go for the Liberty Cap. There's a chance that you'll have rapid fire tiers as one of the effects. And my tiers are slow right now. So that could be very beneficial. So now to show you the power of the pinking shears. What I meant by the hard names, this guy's pretty hard to pronounce as well. I'm not even going to make an attempt. But before I ruin this guy's day, let me just briefly show you how he works. So you notice he keeps popping out. So even when you can't see him, he's still following you. So if you aren't sure where he is, like maybe there's two of them, you're trying to bait them. Just walk slowly and eventually he'll bump into you and he'll pop out. And by bumping into you, if you walk slowly, he won't actually run into you. But if you're running around like a maniac, you're going to bump into him as he pops out. Okay, let me just show you the power of the pinking shears. Game over. Yeah, you see why I'm having trouble keeping the box of friends? I don't really want to at this point because of the power of the pinking shears. And I also have flight. Also, you see the headless guy follows you around, so sometimes you kill an enemy, and there's one in the corner. You gotta bait him to it sometimes. You gotta show him the way. 
And all that boss item did was give me a luck up and two keys. Pretty underwhelming. Probably best if I save the counterfeit penny until next level. Since it's not too hard right now with my current items, I may as well make a little bit, bit of extra cash. So this is probably where the secret room is. It's got a nice little pathway here, kind of baiting you to the secret room. Not guaranteed, but it's very likely. This is a pretty hard room. Focus on the chargers instead. <laughs> Look at the guy at the top. I have never seen that before. Aw, oh, poor guy. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, I'll put him out of his misery. Getting uh, quite a bit of pills here. To try to save a bomb, um, since I think this is the secret room, I'm going to use these mystery pills. Well, I need to wait. In case I get amnesia, I want to wait before I start popping pills randomly. As I've said in the past, it's best to wait till the end before you start using your pills. The boss rooms don't really deviate, or rather the arena rooms. It's not like they necessarily spawn a random type of characters or assortment of characters. You can eventually memorize what they're going to spawn and move your body out of the way ahead of time to anticipate it. So for example, the worm, the long worm I knew was going to spawn here, so I was getting myself out of the way ahead of time. Since it takes a bit of time to memorize what monsters are going to pop out, if you're not sure, just don't stand here and don't stand here. And you'll be fine, because that's where they're going to spawn, for the most part. Okay, I don't want to kite mushrooms here. Ouch. For that exact reason. The headless guys, they shoot out sporadically. It's too dangerous. Don't risk hiding when their heads are off like that. I don't want you anyway, Heart. This is more evidence that this room below me is the secret room. It's another section where the north is blocked off, so we know that can't be the secret room. The south is wide open. There's no, there's nothing blocking it. So I can practically guarantee at this point that the section at the bottom is the secret room. So I'm gonna pop my pink and cheers, grab the battery, it's back up again, and now I can grab the items in the middle. So sometimes there's a stone chest and one of these that are all by themselves and you can actually bait the, the flies into them and shoot them right when they're over the stone chest that way you can blow it up and not waste a bomb okay this is a very good trinket one of my favorites just a solid damage up it's a pretty decent amount of damage as well Cancer, the Curved Horn, and the Broken Crown, in my opinion, are the top three trinkets, because they give you a lot of damage. So next time I leave this room, I'm going to lose my flight, so I'm going to drop this on the floor in case I want to pick it up later. Got to think ahead. Pretty dangerous spot to be in since there's all these uh, barrels here. But it also makes it pretty dangerous for him as you can see. So I haven't found the super secret room yet. This is at the very edge of a direction. So it's possible there could be a super secret room here. 
You want to capitalize on your environment, push this here, hope for the best. No go. That's all right. Matchsticks makes bombs appear more often for you to pick up when you open chests. I think it also means when you clear a room, you, you also might have a higher chance of getting a bomb out of the deal. I'm not 100% sure. But either way, you'll get more bombs over time. The matchstick also has a hidden property where if you have the tick trinket, which sticks to you forever, you pick up the matchstick, it removes the tick. It removes the tick. It's a pretty uncommon scenario to get both those trinkets in the same run, but it's possible and I've done it before. Okay, let's do what I said I was going to try earlier, which is try to blow this up, and maybe if I'm really lucky, I'll get an explosive type pill, which will blow up the secret room. Pretty Fly is great, so I need to remember the white pills give me Pretty Fly, so if I find it in the shop later on, it'll definitely be worth five coins. Now pills, uh, there's more than one way to get this out, I have 10 bombs, so I'll show you a way that I would get it out without using the pinking shears. Uh, requires a little practice, but only a little. Drop a bomb, you push it, and look, it's outside the spikes. I don't have to worry about hitting those. If you're practicing for the first time, sometimes there's layouts without these spikes that are moving up and down, so you have a little bit space to get closer. So you can practice without in a room without those spikes that are popping up to make it a little bit easier for your first time. Okay, so let's try this pill. Friends till the end. Nope. How about you? Ouch, that hurt. Plus six tears. So my tears are already slow because of polyphemus. Maybe it's Polyphemus, I don't know. I'll probably end up looking it up after this video since I'm actually talking about it instead of just making a wild guess and annoying people that actually know how it's pronounced. But either way, tears down really hurts when your tears are already slow. When your tears are really fast, you just lose a little bit of tear speed, but when your tears are slow and you get a tear down, it hurts astronomically more. Okay, I while I was talking, I didn't realize I don't have a item in the bottom right. I don't have a card or or a pill, so I'm just gonna go back and grab the stars, and that'll save myself a key later. This is not the stars. This is the stars. Okay. Lastly, I don't have the super secret room yet. I'm guessing it's at the end. So I'm gonna check that out before I go. Now these trap rooms, just run past them right at the beginning if they're already cleared. You can usually get out of there before they have a chance to ruin your day. Secret room, or rather the super secret room's not here. Both sides are blocked off. It's probably somewhere in this room. I got some extra bombs, so I'm going to risk it. But if you're not sure, it's best to start from the end and work your way backwards. So this is possible to be a super secret room. So I'm going to try this first. Nope. This is also possible. I'm going to give that a try. Success. And failure. I don't need hearts. I really wish I had some kind of donation machine or blood donation machine. Oh, I totally forgot about the shop. But if I buy a 15 cent item, I'm going to be one cent short of getting the arcade next level. Like I've said over and over again, Lilith really capitalizes on those arcades. I'm just gonna move on. Hopefully I'll get it. But even if I do get an arcade, it's not guaranteed to have a blood donation machine. But it's likely.
So you may have noticed those flies that I had from the pill earlier. They make real, real short work of the enemies. Those blue flies and blue spiders are dependent on your damage. So even if your tier speed is really slow like mine, that's okay when it comes to flies and spiders. That just means they're gonna do a ton more damage. I've noticed a significant lack of curses this run. On hard mode, you tend to get curses all the time. I don't know if I've gotten any yet. I'm in good shape, so I'm not going to bother attacking every single poop that I see. So when you're doing this type of room, focus more on dodging the spikes as opposed to dodging the flies. As long as you're moving around, usually you'll miss the flies even if you don't focus on them. So emphasize on the spikes. I'm kind of used to it. I just walk into the room and just start doing it naturally, so it's so I kind of forget that I'm doing it. But either way, the spikes are more dangerous than the flies in this case, especially since spikes are guaranteed to do a full heart of damage. I could have also popped the pinking shears if I wasn't comfortable, since that would grant me flight, and that means I won't, I would not have to worry about the spikes at all. But the risk of that is you'll have less control of when your enemies die because your headless body will start running into your opponents and potentially could blow up in your face. That's emergency contact. It's not that useful in my opinion. It just kind of holds the enemies in place. I use that if I have space or I can grab it, but there's spikes there and I don't feel like... Well, I said I don't feel like wasting a bomb, so I could just use the pinking shears and grab both of these. Empress increases my damage and my speed for one room. And emergency contact, I already talked about that. I'll just show it to you in action. It's I don't use it too often. I don't, I don't really need it that much. But for this room, actually pretty good because the trap's there. But it was a little disappointing that it didn't actually try to grab everybody. So for those red guys in the previous room, don't try to dodge in between their tiers. Just dodge all the way to the side. It's kind of like when fighting the haunt. You don't want to try to stick in the middle of all the tiers and dodge in between. It's just too hard. You can do it, but it requires quite a bit of finesse. So just dodge all the way to the side. So I'm pretty glad I got the pink and cheers since it's multi-purpose. I can use it in this room and I can get myself several keys and all those coins there. Crack the sky. It... When this item first came out, it was very underwhelming. It would just blast the room with light, with white beams. And it wouldn't do that much damage or it'd miss a lot. Now it really focuses the enemy down. It's a huge boss killer and a room clearer. But once again, Peking Shears dominates. So I still haven't really capitalized on the power of the Lilith yet. Of Lilith, rather. Sure, she starts with Incubus, but... I haven't really been damaged much, so I haven't spawned any familiars yet. So I don't feel so bad that I left the box of friends behind.
So the dark red champions, you gotta kill them when they die. I know that doesn't really make sense, but when they turn into that big pile of mush, gotta kill them quick, or otherwise they get back up. Just like these guys. So this is also a room where sometimes there'll be the green ones instead. Ow. That's what I get for explaining things instead of fighting. Um, but anyway, sometimes they're all the green ones that shoot the bombs, and you could kite them around like I showed you in the previous room. A lot of these guys have eyeballs. If I had a really slow attack speed, or run speed rather, they would catch up to me every time. So sometimes it's pretty dangerous getting below one speed. That's the ba that's the base speed for most characters. Ouch. In a way, that's almost considered an unavoidable damage room. Sure, if I had the foresight and didn't attack, I'd be fine. But. In most cases, you're better off attacking right when you walk into a room. That way you can get a leg up and attack the enemy, and maybe kill one or two before they actually start materializing. Okay, let's see what we got in the shop. Pretty sweet. So, restock is, a dis is discounted. And we got the humbling bundle here. So I made a mistake. There was a coin there. What I should have done is picked up the humbling bundle, walked out of the room and walked back in, and that single coin would have been a double. So for example, this key right here was single, this bomb was as well, but now it's double since I walked out of the room and came back with the humbling bundle. So now I really want an arcade, now that I have the humbling bundle. That's going to be a lot of coins. And you see that spider just charged at me at full speed. You gotta expect that every single time. So you never know when they're gonna do that to you. These fat bats, they're not that hard. Cause they just have a lot of health. But when you have a very bad set of items or your damage is really low, they could pose quite a threat because it takes forever to kill them. While you're trying to kill them, some other enemy could sneak up on you and hit you. This could be the super secret room. I'll check it out later. I know I kind of made that look easy, but those, those bonies there... It takes practice. They shoot at you so fast, but eventually you get used to it. So this looks like there's a secret room here. Even though it's towards the end, it kind of looks like it. I have 14 bombs, so I can at least prove a point. So notice this is the very end of the level, because it's right with the boss. And this is a secret room, not a super secret room, because it has other rooms attached to it. There's a room here and the big room down here. So it's unlikely, but it is possible for the secret room to be towards the very end. More mystery pills. Gonna hold off on those. I'm also going to bomb this shopkeeper. I have a 67% chance of getting a devil deal. That's the highest chance before next level where I'll have a 100% chance. So if you bomb the shopkeeper when you have a higher chance of a devil deal, the shopkeepers are worth more when you bomb them. They're worth more devil deal chance. So let's give this a shot. If I was short on bombs, I'd start popping pills trying to get explosive diarrhea or horf. But no need, I got plenty of bombs. And what is up with these super secret rooms having only hearts? Normally I'd love that if I had an opportunity to hurt myself. But I don't. I need, a de I need a donation machine badly. I could risk it all and lose my dark hearts and start stabbing myself or hurting myself in this room. But it's not worth it. No arcade for me. 
I didn't think about it though, but I've already bought things at the shop. I didn't realize this is a library. So let's go get my third book, perhaps? Yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna get Bookworm. Now, I don't want any of these, but it's best to pick up all three. That way they won't spawn again later on. It'll remove it from the item pool once you pick it up. This gives you homing tears. This drops troll bombs everywhere. This gives you flight. The Holy Bible can also be used, or rather the Bible can be used to kill mom in one shot. If you use the Bible on Satan, you kill yourself. Don't do it. But I have no reason to use the Bible when the pinking shears gives me flight ahead of time anyway. Okay. Shame there's no arcade, but let's go get the boss. This is Champion Gertie since he's got the dark color. So he's just going to be summoning enemies as fast as he can. He won't even attack. So let's just end his life really quickly. This is kind of a fun item, marbles. When you get damaged, there's a small chance you'll eat your trinket and it'll be with you forever. It also gives you some bonus trinkets. These are not great though. Bible Tract gives you more eternal hearts, but it's unlikely it's gonna happen. Mom's Locket heals you whenever you go through a locked door. I think it also applies if you open a locked chest as well. Now the Tonsil, if you're if you have a great run, you're doing good, and the tonsil drops, and you don't have the achievement to unlock every item, you want to use the tonsil. It takes a lot of pain, but if you, if you get hurt X number of times, I don't remember how many, it's a lot though, eventually the tonsil spawns and becomes a familiar. That unlocks it as a treasure item. It's an achievement that most people are missing. It's very useful if you have a blood donation machine, but I haven't seen one, and I already got the achievement anyway. The tonsil on its own, even when it does spawn, and you've worked that hard to get it to spawn, it's not great. It's pretty much Guppy's hairball without the damage. It, it does block shots every so often, but it's really not that helpful and not worth the effort. Hi, Krampus. So I, the mistake I made is I ran to a corner and I didn't know if he would shoot the corner or not. So when he does that move, don't stand in line with him and don't stand on the corners of him. You need to stand in between those two locations. So in between the corner and in between in line with him. So it's, it's, it's almost like a bullet hell. You have to stand in a perfect spot to not get hit. Head of Krampus, it's a really good boss killer, but guess what? Pink and Cheers are better. And the child's heart drops more hearts. Don't need it. I want dark hearts. Or some kind of blood donation machine to utilize all these hearts. I did leave behind a card in one of the further rooms, so I'm gonna go for that. Two cards, actually. Right, the Dagos. I'll save that for the next floor in case I have a curse there. It'll cure it. I'm also going to bomb this in hopes that I get a white pill. Nope. Because the white pills, I know, are giving me pretty...
pretty fly. Case, for those of you that don't understand, every time you start a new game, a new round, the pill colors are randomized and the effects of the pills are randomized. So don't expect to always get pretty fly when you use a white pill unless it's during the same run and you know white gives you a pretty fly. Another thing is this is a tears down pill. If you get PhD, it will change it to a tears up pill instead. So sometimes it's still worth it to hold on to a bad pill. If you're lucky, you might make it into a good pill. Right, I need to go get the card. Okay, it's, I, so I, I could have used the stars to save myself a key. And I could have used the Empress during the boss fight, but the Pinking Shears trivializes the fight. I'm bringing Dagoz in case there is a Curse of the Blind. Hey look, Curse of the Lost, why not? Goodbye, Curse. <laughs> so when you hear the laughs, you know the hands are gonna come down, just walk slow. That way you don't bump into anybody else that's coming down. And these guys, just bait them. They're kind of, if you don't know what you're doing, you just start hitting their uh, faces. So just bait them to run forward and then get around them and shoot their brain. You may have also noticed that if you shoot them on the side, that also counts as shooting their brain. My bombs are big. I'm gonna take advantage of this room. That was definitely worth it. I don't think I mentioned, but my bombs are big because of what Super Wrath dropped me. Devil just gives you bonus damage. I'm going to use the stars. Well, it's better to use the stars. You can take advantage of it a little bit better by using it while you're in a cursed room. That way you don't have to stab yourself through the spikes as you're walking out. You can just teleport straight from the room and it'll be safer. You can also use it, use it during the mom fight. You finish the mom fight, normally you'd be stuck. You can't leave the boss room at that point, but if you use the stars, it's a way out. These guys are always hard. I'm going to pop the pink and cheers. The Master Immortal. They're also super fast and they charge you just like that. See, I even got hit with the pink and cheers on. So this, this type of room here is just pretty much unacceptable if you're not super powerful like I am right now. You just get decimated. Don't have too much advice for you. You could try bombs, but it's still very dangerous of a room overall. Right, I thought I still had the Pinking Cheers effect for some reason, even though I already know it doesn't last for more than one room. Could also use the Pinking Cheers for that trinket there. It's not a great trinket though. There's a very small chance when you get hit that you become immortal and you can damage people, kind of like Pac-Man. So you may notice that one of those pennies does not have a double. So everything has a double because of the humbling bundle. The only thing that cannot have a double for coins is if it's a lucky penny. Well, you can also tell by the green shimmer. It has a slightly green tint to it. It's 
hard to see, but it's a way you can identify if it's a lucky penny. It helps you make a decision if, for example, there's a rock wall in your way and you have to spend a bomb in order to get the coin. You wouldn't want to do that if it was just a regular coin, but a lucky coin, that's worth it. The more luck you have, the more, the better items you get generally. It's a very small effect, small difference, but also there's certain items in the game that the higher your luck, the more damage you can do, the more often you'll do a certain attack. So here's what I meant by capitalizing on the the stars. It, would have been, it actually would have been better if I waited one more room and used the pink and shears to come in here. Since if you fl have flight and you walk into a cursed room, you don't get hurt at all. Now walking out you do, but walking in you don't if you have flight. But that's all right. Blow these up. I push the bomb into the flames, make it a little bit easier. You could just get close and drop the bomb and run, but it's a little more guaranteed if you push it in. But for me, it was a little bit redundant since I had big bombs. I could have just dropped it over here and it probably would have hit all four. That was useless. Goodbye. This right here, it's tough. It's a tough choice. Sometimes it could be absolutely amazing. Sometimes it could ruin your run. Part of it has to do with your skill level. The other part has to do with your build. It's a little more helpful when you're firing a lot of tears very fast, because even if you have trouble with accuracy, if you shoot a lot of tears, it's irrelevant. This would allow me to shoot two tears at once, and it'd be diagonal. Now, I'm actually going to take it because I don't remember if the dunce is affected by Incubus or not. And there's only one way to find out. Well, there we go. I'm shooting two tiers, and you see how it can be difficult. Now they're not going to shoot. I can't shoot directly towards my opponent. I have to move to the corners from now on. Would I have taken this had I known that was going to occur for sure? No, I wouldn't. Because I have a slow tier rate. But I have the pinking shears, so I'll be just fine against bosses at least. But I'm going to have to be a little bit careful from now on. Speaking of careful, I may as well uh, blow up these blue flames and get some soul hearts. And you see there's a charge key there. Best to save the charge key when you have no charge. And I have no charge, so I'm taking it. I take eternal hearts at the end, because if you take it early on and you find a blood donation machine or a devil beggar, if you get hurt, it's going to take away the eternal heart first. So pick them up at the end. Don't forget. Right, so I started towards the top, so the boss is most likely over here. I want to head straight for the boss because I know the pinking shears will make short work of him. And then I'll have an extra item from the boss. Stopwatch slows down every single enemy to really slow speeds. It's a guaranteed win for me, pretty much. For the sake of entertainment value, I leave it alone. Huh. Interesting. So, I have a couple options here. I do want this for sure. Car battery allows you to double the use of your activatable item. So I'll have two bodies running around like crazy instead of just one. It's going to deal even more damage. Could also get the potato peeler and use that. It'll give me a orbital cube of meat specifically. If you have a lot of health, you could use it multiple times. 
but the question is do I want to do that? Especially since it's gonna cost me money. I'm gonna wait and see how much money I get at the end of this level. If I can't get enough money for an arcade machine, or an arcade room rather, next level, I'm not gonna buy that. For sure. I still might not buy it. We'll see. Yeah, and as you can see, I'm struggling a little bit more trying to hit my enemies. That's the risk of dunce. Here's where dunce comes in handy. Not very often you get a setup like that, but there it is. Alright, Pandora's box has a different effect depending on what floor you're on. In this case, it gives me a bunch of soul hearts because I'm on Necropolis 1. There could be a secret room here. I'm gonna gamble because I got 11 bombs, it's plenty. What do you know? There's so many slot machines, I'm also gonna bomb this, get some coins out of the slot machine potentially, and blow up the shopkeeper for a little more devil deal chance. Capitalize on your bombs completely. If you can bomb more than one thing at once, do it. Normally this would be a pretty hard boss. Pop the pink and cheers though. Say good night. I picked up I picked up the more options earlier, so now the boss gives me more than one option. Both of these fantastic items, but the Halo gives you multiple stats up and an HP up. So it's a little bit better than that syringe that you saw there. And I got full hearts now, so I'm just going to take my eternal heart and go. I could explore the rest of the rooms, but that's all right, I'm gonna move on. Finally. I can't believe it. It's finally here. So I want to I want to use the devil beggar first. So I have an old bandage that makes hearts drop every so often when you get hurt. That's why the double heart just dropped there. I don't want to pick it up now because that that'll be an overheal. I got one and a half hearts down. This gives me two. So just stab yourself once, pick it up. More pills. Hopefully that baby will drop a white pill for me so that way I can get the pretty fly. So you may notice that my trinket's gone now. When I use the, I forgot what it's called, but I think it's the bag of marbles. Yeah, I think that's what it is. When you get hurt, you have a chance of eating your trinket. So now it's, it's with me forever. So I'm actually going to wait before I start stabbing myself some more. Because maybe I'll find another trinket and I can have a chance of eating that too. The golden horseshoe gives a chance of making the treasure room have a second item. It's very rare even with the golden horseshoe. The golden horseshoe also does not take effect till the next level. Now this is the last level with the treasure room. What this means is that this trinket is absolutely useless and does nothing right now. So you may have noticed the ones that had the blood on their mouth, they were the ones that shoot the red brimstone. So that's why I just held still instead of running to the sides. I almost did that though. Now I could save the hangman and see if I need it later on. I could also use it now and walk through this curse room without taking damage. I'm going to explore the rest of the level before I make my decision. 
One thing about the dunce I forgot to mention is it gives you... Well, actually, it's called the Wiz, I think. Yeah, either way, it gives you spectral tears, so that's at least a benefit. Even though this item's been more of a hindrance for me. Now, due to the annoyance of the Wiz, if I have a chance to re-roll my items for any reason, I'm going to do it. If you're doing okay, it's probably best you don't. Pretty much, if you're in total pain and agony, then absolutely take a risk and re-roll all your stuff if you have an opportunity. But if you're doing alright, you're probably better off leaving that alone. There are some potential synergies and item combinations that can flat out kill you if you're not careful. One example would be the tiny planet and epicac. It's going to make your explosive tears go around you and it's really hard to control. And then even with my reflection added onto that, it's just miserable. I've even had some combinations where there was literally no way you could attack without hurting yourself. Like I had uh, Death's Touch, Epicac, Monstro's Lung, and my tier size was so large that when I attacked, I'd blow myself up every single time, and I lost about a 50 win streak off of that combination. The cone head every so often will prevent you from taking damage when you're hit. It's okay, but really any defensive item at this point is good for me since I have the whiz. It's harder to kill your enemies quickly when you have to aim around diagonally. That's all right. I don't want the mimic. These guys, I feel like no one really gets super good at dodging them. You only get better. I mean, you don't really dodge them 100% reliably unless you're really awesome and used to it. I just, I need a little work on them because they charge you so quickly. Now, you may be wondering, why is this guy charmed here? So I charmed the portal. The portal popped out a monster. That monster is mine. He'll even follow me. We meet again, watch. That's plan C. You use it, you kill yourself, but you kill your opponent. Only useful if you have multiple lives. Don't use it on delirium. You'll die before he does. Don't grab King Baby. I think I've seen him in every single episode pretty much. Just don't grab him. Now, I'm looking for a good item, but I'm also looking for a white pill so I can get another pretty fly. This is useless. It makes, it allows you to have two choices in the treasure room, but remember, no need for that anymore. Now, if I was really patient, I could actually capitalize on these four hearts, or two hearts for five coins. I could stab myself lose all the hearts, come back here, buy another, and do that over and over again. For demonstrative purposes, I'll show you one time, just so you completely understand. Pretty much what it means is I can exploit that blood donation machine until it blows up. I said I was going to wait for a trinket, but I'm tired of waiting. Technically, that'd be a better idea. 
but my videos on average are a little over an hour and there's only so much time I want to spend on it. So I could have ran back to the shop and bought the two hearts for five coins and as you stab yourself you get more money back because of the humbling bundle. That's how I could capitalize on that. But it blew up early and that's over. Alright, I'm going to have this guy pay out. Beggars are likely to drop HP ups. Here's the beam. It poisons your enemy. But in combat, I believe it starts recharging itself. Actually, I'm thinking of the butter bean, I think. And I have no reason to play the shell game and gamble. Because I have plenty of bombs and keys. I could have him pay out until he gives me the fly item, but... I don't really need it. And I could have used the hangman early ahead of time to not take damage from that, but too bad. Didn't do it. I can get a little sloppier if if I'm in a good position. This is pretty nasty because I can't really hit the portal while all these enemies here that are blocking my attacks. But fortunately it wasn't a very deadly combination of monsters. Regret. I regret picking up the whiz. A lot of champions here. If I didn't have bombs and if it wasn't such a dire situation, I could have baited one of the, the boom flies to the center and be able to reach the hearts without wasting a bomb. I want to use these pills, but there's a chance it could be a teleport pill, and that could, has a very rare chance of teleporting you to the I am error room. So I don't want to use any mystery pills when I'm at the tier 2 level of this. So the Dank Depths, the Depths, Necropolis 2, it's too risky. So it's good to bomb these guys in this case because one bomb, well I think I could bomb all four with my fat bomb. Let's see. Yep, a lot of spires though, so get out of the room. If you have a chance to run and they're not going to respawn, then get out of there. I would like some more soul hearts, especially since this is the last... Um, and this is the last time I get to use shops. I'll buy this to slow my enemies. That'll make chests drop a lot more items. But as you can see, I'm not really hurting on items. Sackhead drops sacks, which increases my chance for batteries, which is useful with the pinking shears because it takes a while to charge them up. Red candle, you want to grab that if you're if you don't have the pink and cheers because pink and cheers are awesome. But it'll help carry you if you're if you have a bad assortment of items. But the pink and cheers, due to the fact that it takes several rooms for them to charge, whereas the red candle you can use it multiple times in a room. If you're not confident with your abilities, it's probably you're probably actually better off in my scenario if you have my items to grab the red candle. That way you can use it to attack straight ahead since the dunce attacks in the corners.
but I'm I'm confident enough that I could utilize the pink shears. But I'm I sure am having a hell of a time trying to attack this ghost. And let's go for the super secret room. It takes practice. I've said this a lot, but it takes practice. I just kind of know where the super secret rooms and the super and the regular secret rooms are. You just get used to it when you see the layout. But I always try my best to explain why I notice it. I found a lot of heart rooms and I haven't been able to use them. I haven't even spawned a single familiar with my Cambian Conception. I forgot I even had it. Because the overlay here doesn't show all my items. It shows uh, a lot of them, just not all of them. I'm moving on. Pop that. She's a champion version because she's blue. So she's going to summon a lot of hard enemies. But the pink and shears just don't care. Either way, stay close to the center so that way you don't bump into the doors. If you need to close the door, she'll also pop her hand out every so often. But keep moving. That way, when her foot comes down, you don't have to react to it. And don't do what I did, which was bump into the enemies. There's also a tinted rock here. I could have baited her foot to crush me, but I got plenty of bombs. Now I'm having a bad time due to the, the whiz, so I'm taking the Polaroid. It's going to make my adventure a little bit easier. The only reason to take the negative is if you haven't unlocked everything yet. I generally take it though if I'm having a more powerful run. Now I already can't see. So I'm just going to try this. That wasn't very helpful. But I could have used that to get into a boss room potentially. But that's alright. I... It's unlikely to find one. I, I still could. But I don't have a big reason to go into one right now. So what's hard about the womb is the red creep that's on the floor. I couldn't even see it. I just got damaged twice and I, I couldn't even figure out why until it's too late. So you gotta be very aware. Now I don't use bombs very much offensively. You may have noticed that. But that was a pretty difficult room, especially with, with the Wiz, when they're right in front of me all the time. So don't be afraid to use a bomb if things get a little dicey. Again, the, the red on red, it's it's tough. I'm just gonna wait for that creep to go away. I don't see any tinted rocks here. Now trying to find bombs, or rather secret rooms, is very difficult when you have Curse of the Lost. If you're very desperate for items and your, your run is on the brink of death, if you want you can actually map it out. You can walk through the level and start mapping out all your rooms, and then try to figure out where the secret room is from there. I don't like being cornered like that. There's hardly any room. That's why I popped the pinking shears. Thank goodness. Need as much defense as I can take. Petrified poop is almost useless because there's hardly any brown poop once you reach the womb and above. So I'm going to gamble 
I'm going to use the Hanged Man. Go through here without taking damage. Hope for a Soul Heart or two. Let's see what I get. Nope. There's Hematemesis, though. I can't really capitalize on it at the moment. So on the woman above, you take full heart damage. I just took it right there. But because I used the hangman to get inside, it's pretty much like going through a cursed room on a normal floor, because I lost one heart, as opposed to two hearts, which is what I would lost if I didn't use the hangman to go inside. So much for that, but I can use my pinky and shears to get to get that sack if I want. But I also want to save it for the boss. Boy, I wish I had picked up any kind of tears up, really. I mean, the only tears up I think I picked up is the halo. Then I got the tears down from that pill earlier. So, this is a little bit of a time-consuming run, unfortunately. But that's what you get when you take risks. I, against my better judgment, I gave the Wiz a try because I wasn't sure if Incubus would be affected by the split or not. I thought it might attack in a straight line, and it would just would have given me only benefit. But you win some, you lose some. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. This is another tough choice here. The inner eye makes your tears shoot into three. Now, what's the reason why I'm hesitating is because my tear speed is going to be... My tear rate of fire, rather, is going to be really slow. But it's also going to shoot three at a time, meaning I'll hit more often. Eh. Let's give it a shot. This will be interesting. Well, to my surprise, my tier speed did not actually get affected at all. I'm actually not sure why. Maybe because I'm already shooting my tears slow enough? Either way, that was only a benefit. Normally picking up the inner eye or the mutant spire just slows down your tear rate. I think this has something to do with Polyphemus. Because that slows down your tears quite a bit. Perhaps they don't stack in terms of slowing down your tear speed. So now I've made a good decision, not knowing it would do this, but nonetheless, it was a good decision. And this will hopefully get me to run a little bit faster. Hey, a tear's up. I can't believe it. Now we're talking. I know I've said I generally use pills at the very end of the level. But because of Curse of the Lost, I'm not going to remember where the, where the pills are that are left over. Prioritize the ones that are shooting you in this type of room. It usually takes a while for those red little pouches to build up. Remember, these bloody guys, they have blood going all the way down their body, so you know they're going to shoot in all four directions, not just two. Now I could start popping multiple one makes you small pills. It doesn't actually affect your hitbox. Your hitbox remains the exact same. So even if you're tiny, you can get a pill or rather a uh, a bullet that comes to you. It'll still hit you even though you're not, even though you're smaller. That's a way of preventing someone from using multiple pills and becoming immortal. If you get small enough, it becomes harder to pick up items. 
same thing as with being big, you still have the same exact size hitbox. So there's two ways to do this. The pro way is to slide your body in and run in and grab it. That's an unnecessary risk though. I got bombs, just do that. Ta-da. Now, this definitely isn't one of my more exciting runs, but that's the thing about Binding of Isaac. Binding of Isaac giveth, Binding of Isaac taketh. Some runs are fantastic. You have a great assortment of items that work well together. Sometimes you get items that slow down your game a lot. Sometimes, though, it's really cool to overcome insane challenges where you get assortment of items that you know are horrendous but then you pull out in the end. That's part of the reason why I really like this game. This boss can be found even at the very beginning of the game but by being in the womb he has more health than his basement counterpart. I always recommend killing the smaller guy first. He has a lot less health. The horse on a stick there is a lot more dangerous than him, but he has so much health that you're better off just killing the other guy first. So I want to keep my pinking shears. So I'm going to grab the divorce papers. I believe I get a tears up from it. Yes, that's what I want. It also gave me an empty bone heart container, which is a new addition to the Binding of Isaac. It's worth a little more than a regular heart, but you can't use it for devil deals. Friends till the end. I'm not that impressed with this. This missing page here, when you get hurt and you're missing several hearts, only have a half a heart or less, then it'll deal damage to everybody. Sister Maggie's just a regular familiar. I don't have the box of friends. Familiars aren't that helpful for me at the moment, or most of them at least. So that's all right. I'm just going to keep my health. Oh, hello. Yeah, always keep an eye on the rocks. There's a lot of rocks in the womb section, so you're likely to get tinted rocks throughout the level. And I charmed the nether portal, so I got a new friend. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult though because you're trying to dodge tears, but you find out it's actually your buddy's tears. So it can get you in trouble. Especially when they start shooting at you like this, it's really distracting. That room's too dangerous, so I'm gonna hover over here, use the rocks for cover. You can only do that if you have flight, though. All right, things are getting better and better. I'm starting to fire pretty fast. Dunce is, uh, the Wiz is still kind of tripping me out. And this room is really dangerous. Those bigger guys do two hearts of damage. Two full hearts, so it's a lot of pain. I've had, I've had many runs end because of a guy hitting for double damage. Especially if you're Eden, who might spawn with very few hearts. Or Judas, who only has one. Okay, I just ate my trinket. Not very helpful trinket, though. This is too dangerous, because I need to get in a position to where I can hit them with the side. From the side. But I have to get close to them to do that. So I just drop my bomb.
Oh, thank goodness. I accept. Hierophant gives you those two soul hearts. Always a great card. I want this battery in case I need to use the pink and cheers again. Don't risk it with the red poops since they respawn. You want to make sure that before you charge in to grab whatever items there, make sure you know that the poop just died so you can run in and grab it without risk. That room's always hard because they charge at you immediately. That's why I dropped the bomb. I got 21 bombs. I'm in good shape with those bombs. And I'm going to gamble. I'm going to go for the cursed room. Pop the pink and cheers so I can fly, take no damage on the inside. And is it worth it? Uh, maybe. Shade's alright. He follows you around. And he deals damage to enemies that pass through him. Now a very unknown fact. People don't really know about this with the shade. But if you keep him around long enough, eventually he just dies. He kills himself, he spawns into a few little black chargers. And that's the end of him. He's pretty... I would consider him a mostly insignificant item, so I usually would forget about him and didn't realize he was dead for several floors. That's a nasty room. Those guys were sucking me in while the guys were charging me. So that's kind of destined for... Uh, for failure there. Alright, just follow the train. That's the safest route. Checking for a super secret room because I got excessive bombs. Oh, and I almost missed a tinted rock. I'm also going to check here. I think there's a secret room. Yep. Well, it's nice to have all this money greed, but I need somewhere to spend it. That's a sticky nickel. It only happens if you unlock it. Normally, if you don't have, well, not normally, if you don't have the sticky nickel unlocked, you're never going to get sticky nickels to drop. But sticky nickels are kind of an addition. They don't replace regular nickels, so they're added on if you unlock it. I don't remember what the criteria is to unlock them, though. So I unlocked everything a long time ago, and it's hard to remember. Anything that I have that I see in this game, if you're not sure how to unlock it, just look it up. Everything's there online. Same thing as before, follow the train. Now there might be a super secret room to the south. Not this time. I'm going to pop Friends the friend at the end for the boss. There's a mystery pill here, but I don't want to use it in case it's teleport. Because when you teleport to the I Am Era room, you don't get to choose if you want to go to the Cathedral or Seoul. Pop your pinking shears, circle. When she's up there, though, you don't, you don't deal any damage to her. So you're going to have to kill the rest of these laser beam guys before you can damage her. But once she comes back down... She's finished. Always anticipate that explosion at the end. I know it comes as a surprise, but don't let it surprise you. It's coming. Okay, and I picked up the Polaroid, so I know I need to take the Cathedral Path, which is where the Beam of Light is. You may also notice... My character is glowing. See the white glow? It's very hard to see, but it's there. That tells you if you have the Polaroid or the negative. Don't rely on it, though, because 
it's not always there. Sometimes there's no glow at all. You can look through your items and check. You can also go left and right on the D-pad or the keyboard to see the extra items that you have. Or alternatively, you can have the little sidebar here, which is in your options, extra HUD, and double check, because it's sometimes you don't remember which one you picked up, the Polaroid or the negative. Now one thing I've been forgetting about is blowing up the dresser to try to get another pretty fly pill. Cheers up is great also, I'll take it. So I just realized I haven't spawned a familiar with the Cambian Conception because the Cambian Conception is gone. I re-rolled it at the very beginning of the game. Even though, even though Lilith started with that item, it's not part of her. It could be re-rolled. So I don't have it. It's gone. That's why I don't have extra familiars. Incubus is a part of Lilith, though, because she's blind. She can't shoot, tear, shoot tears. That's the only way she can fire, is with Incubus. The mom's eyeshadow is working pretty good to get me some buddies. Okay, so these are some innocent looking buttons, but when you're on the womb and beyond, these buttons can be a huge detriment. It's usually not worth the risk. You can get several monstro spawning, you can get super envy. Now I have the pinking shears, so I'm going to wait for those to charge, and then I'm going to give them a try. So the ghosts just prepare to move quickly once they appear. They pretty much always appear in range to attack you, so just get out of the way once they pop up. I got all these excessive bombs, I want more health, I'm blowing every single one up. There was a tinted rock here as well, I think. So that headless horseman there, although he was just a head without a horse, but anyway, he shoots the three tiers at once. Don't try to dodge in between if you can help it. Just dodge around all three of them. Dodging on the inside is risky. Although to be fair, everything in this game is risky. It's just a matter of trying to find the least amount of risk. Or the best risk versus reward scenarios. By the way, these pills are actually different. Just a slight tint of blue. Yes, I want to do this, but I'm going to go into the secret room first and try out my pinking shears and try out those buttons. I'm actually hoping for a bad combination just to prove my point. Yeah, this is what I mean. I didn't have the pinking shears, that would be a lot harder. And don't hit, don't hit both buttons. Do one at a time, make sure you clear whatever enemies are there, then hit the second button. Give me something good. Now. Thanks to the inner eye, I'm a lot more powerful than before. Makes the dunce, or rather the whiz, a little bit better. A little bit more worth it.
So I'm going to hang on to the judgment card for the moment. It'll spawn a beggar. I'm going to bank on finding the super secret room. And some super secret rooms have an eternal heart in them. If it does, that means any heart that spawns in that room will be an eternal heart as well. This means I could actually get extra eternal hearts if I spawn a beggar there and he pays out and gives me some hearts. Well, not pays out in this case. When, I, when the phrase pay out is used, it refers to if they give you their item and they're gone. In that case, I would rather he doesn't pay out quite yet and just drops hearts. I'm getting a lot of these blue pills. I hope they're really good. We'll find out at the end. Oh, this is bad. There's very little I could have done. There were so many of those bonies there. Having a high run speed is almost crucial for doing good in this game. Because even when your items are great, if you can't dodge, it's terrible. You're gonna, it's a pretty higher chance of dying. By the way, that trinket I got allows you to get a eternal heart the next floor. But it only gives you half an eternal heart, so it's not gonna help me very much. But I don't even have a trinket slot, so I don't really care. Hmm. So temperance could be helpful. Well, if I could spend some money. But I don't have much opportunity to spend money. I have more than enough money to pay out the beggar. See that? I, I plowed through the room before the traps even had a chance to react. That's the best way to do it. And with the spade... I have maximum keys. All right, and there's a place I could spend my money now. Still gonna wait a little bit. The only thing I could really get out of the slot machine right now is another pretty fly, since there's a small chance you'll get pretty fly when uh, going to the slot machine. But I actually have an extra chance because it could drop the slot machines drop pills, which I know one of them is pretty fly, but it can also give me a pretty fly without a pill. So I have a, high, I have a much higher chance of getting it. I bombed here. I don't think the super secret room's here. I don't think I bombed. I think the bomb would have reached the wall. Yeah, it's not there. So let's try you. Nope. How about you? Okay, no eternal heart. That's all right. I'll go ahead and pop the judgment. judgment. Hmm. Don't know if I want to risk all these hearts. Don't know if I have enough to get him to pay out. All right. Isaac is really easy with the pink and cheers. Then again, everyone is pretty much. Run to the corner. Don't run in the same direction that the white beams are kind of coming. Even though it's a corner, if you stand here, it's a risk. Sometimes it'll hit you still. So run to a corner that is that the beams are not heading for. Okay, I'm not going to spend the time on the slot machine because I'm doing all right. And I know there's at least one, two, three, three and a half hearts. Well, I know there's more than that because I have the humbling bundle. So each of those hearts that you see on the map counts as a set of two hearts. The humbling bundle does not work on half hearts, so I know the half hearts truly are half hearts.
Oh, thank you. Contract from below. You clear a room and you might get two sets of items instead of one. Now before moving on to the chest, which is the final level, unless delirium pops up, I'm going to grab a half heart. Well, I also want to use the rest of these pills that I left behind and see if they're any good. Yes. Speed up. Okay, so much for that. I actually wanted to keep a half a heart. The reason behind that is if you have a half heart when you're damaged, when you have the Polaroid, it makes you invincible for a few seconds. Okay, let's let's finish this run. We're almost at two hours. Thanks to the whiz slowing me down. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, the Blood of the Martyr is really good, since it's just solid damage. The rest of these are eh. So that right there just causes damage as it passes enemies. The beggar steals your coins but gives you items. And the juicy sack spawns spires every so often and slows down the opponents with the white creep. Let's see if I can get a pretty fly out of this dresser. This is not the same white pill. I'm afraid to pop the pill because I don't want to get question mark, question mark, question mark, which causes you to have curse of the maze. For those that don't understand, the pills that you don't know about already say question mark, question mark, question mark. But some of them, when you use them, actually say question mark, question mark, question mark. Those are the pills that give you Curse of the Maze for the level. And those are some trinkets that won't help me that much. I'm going to leave those alone. Now, any boss that I can't handle very well, I can use the Pink and Cheers on. But these bosses have been pretty easy for me. So if you're going to get anything out of this lesson, it's be careful of the whiz. In my case, it didn't really destroy me, it just kind of slowed me down. But certainly there are certain combinations that can destroy you. I would say in a, in a lot of cases you want to avoid the whiz. But there are some times, although rare in my opinion, where the Wiz actually can help you out a lot. I'll give you one example. You get the Tractor Beam, which shoots all of your tiers in a line, a straight line. You get the Wiz, instead of the Wiz shooting in different directions, it all shoots in a straight line. So you've pretty much doubled your damage without any kind of hindrance whatsoever. Things like that. This is a little dangerous, so I'm going to go ahead and pop my pinking shears. They're going to be popping up, and they might pop on me if I'm not careful. The thing that people don't know very much about Super Wrath and Wrath is if you blow them up with a bomb, they die in one hit no matter what. A lot of people just use the bombs the enemy drops to kill them with it, which is fine, but it's a way you can kill them really quickly if you can pull it off. Now I picked this up. Normally it removes it from the item pool. In fact, it's, it is removed from the item pool, but Super Wrath can drop it again. This is a very dangerous room normally, since it's very tiny, and he has like a bullet hell type attack. But 
That's why they throw these enemies at you. They expect it to be pretty strong when you reach this point. Now, what I could have done differently there to avoid that attack is I could have, I should have ran immediately around. I kind of hesitated and then ran. That's how I could have avoided that. Or alternatively, if I didn't have the Wiz, I could have just shot straight into the invisible enemies. Yeah, it's pretty hard to deal with this kind of room here. Room here. I kind of wish I... Oh, I have the pinky cheers. Well, <laughs> I thought it wasn't charged. I would have used it here. But it's too late now. I've gone this far. I may as well finish the job. are looking pretty good though. I'm in a pretty good spot. I have uh, most of my heart containers full here. It's almost uh, max. I'm only missing three and a half heart containers right now. Because there is a cap on that. 12 heart containers maximum. If you play the original Binding of Isaac and you play the Eternal Edition, there's, I think, an endless amount of soul hearts and heart containers you can pick up. Well, this is a really nasty room, but I want to save my... Well, I said I want to save my pinking shears for the final boss, but there's a battery up ahead. Or backwards. So I'm going to use it. There's little advice I can give you when it comes to rooms like that, because there's just so much chaos. That's just a matter of practice. Once you get really good at fighting one monstro, or one monstro the second, then you can get better at fighting multiples in a smaller room. So, let me demonstrate to you what I was referring to with hearts earlier. This has an eternal heart. One, I get to capitalize on the half eternal heart that I already have that I gained from the trinket. Two, I can use the lovers, gain another. Okay, let's end this. If the portal spawns for the void, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not in a position to do that. I'm not strong enough. The dunce makes it too hard to aim. It's way too risky. So that's the end. Hematemesis. This is the end of episode number four. I know it wasn't the most exciting run. That's what happens sometimes. Hope to see you guys on the next episode. Please subscribe and like this video if it helped you in any way. See you next time.